G'day, I'm Mark Hoth and welcome to Swift Almanac. Now that we're loading and saving data, we want to check out the thread safety of our calls. Core data is not thread safe and this means that any context that we have created must be accessed only on the thread on which it was created. And this creates two problems. The first is, how do we create a context on a background thread? And secondly, how do we ensure that we only use a context on the thread that it was created on? So let's have a look. Okay, so we're still running our core data uh, code. And um, the first thing we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to create a context that is not on the main thread. And so if we look at our load users, you can see we uh, get this app delegate, uh, and then we get a context from the persistent container view context. And if you recall, if we go to app delegate, when we install uh, core data, we get this um, lazy variable, the persistent container, um, which gives us access to our uh, database. So uh, if we want to get a background context, then what we want to do is we want to go let background context equals appdelegate.persistentcontainer. And you can see here that there is uh, this, uh, this method new background context, which will return us a, a context that we can then use uh, when we're creating things and making requests and eventually saving um, or, and probably more uh, likely, um, you're just going to call something like this, prefer, perform background task, and that is going to create a context for us on a background thread, and then you will just uh, put your code um, inside inside the closure. And uh, now if you do it this way, then uh, if you make any changes to your data, you must call save because uh, once this block is completed, everything is going to disappear. And so you, know, you won't be able to save it unless you save it within the persistent container. Um, other things that uh, you, you must, must do if you're using this method um, is that it's a background task. So you can't do anything uh, that's UI related because everything UI related has to be on the main queue, so you'd have to call dispatch queue for any um, any user interface or anything that needs to be run on the main queue. And secondly, um, you can't do anything to do with this view context. So in here, you can't go um, let main queue context equals app delegate dot persistent container dot view context. This is on the main queue and this is not, and that is guaranteed to crash. And of course that would have to be self. Um, so uh, those are the, the main things that uh, you can do. Um, now, obviously if, you, if you're calling perform background task, um, now this is a uh, sort of like a little helper method. Um, you, you, you may want to, uh, well look, you're gonna, use, you're gonna use this perform background task, it's so much easier, but if you are in the high performance stakes, then you might need to create your own context and specify what kind of queue you want it to be on for performance uh, reasons, but otherwise this is just gonna stick you on a, um, the most appropriate queue uh, for, uh, you know, for your application, it's just gonna, the, the operating system will allocate one for you. Um, so so if you were doing this, uh, this second one here, where you're 
uh, using perform background task. Well, once this is run, it disappears and uh, everything that's within this block is, um, is, is guaranteed or everything within this closure is guaranteed to be running on the same uh, thread. So everything's uh, fine. But if you are um, playing around with different contexts for whatever reason and uh, for instance your save function rather than just getting a, a context on the main queue and saving the data to that if for instance uh, we created a context that was passed a parameter of uh, an NS managed object context and we decide to pass the context here then we could uh, pass this main contents this main context or we could pass the uh, background context and so when we get down to our save function we don't know whether or not we're on the main queue or on some background queue so there is an insurance policy uh, which allows the context will know uh, which uh, thread it is running on. And so there are a couple of, and you can see them here, um, there's perform uh, and perform and wait. So, um, and basically perform is an asynchronous call uh, and it will perform the code that is in the block so it would look something like that you wouldn't have these the other alternative is uh, the context dot uh, perform and wait and uh, this is an asynchronous sorry this is a synchronous code which means that uh, until whatever code you run is completed this uh, procedure is not going to um, it is not going to finalize and return. So um, now, basically, you only ever want to use context dot perform, uh, and what's going on here is this block of code is being placed in a queue, and then the execution of the uh, application is going to continue. Um, continuously and if you use perform and wait then essentially what you're doing is you're moving this uh, block of code to the front of the queue and running it and the rest of the queue has to wait until uh, this code completes now if you call this on the main queue then uh, you're going to freeze your user interface uh, if it's a takes a long time and uh, secondly if you've got performs in here um, which are, uh, should have which should have been performed in a first in first out basis before this one occurs, then you can get deadlocks which will crash your application. So um, there is no uh, instance when I've been able to figure out when you should call perform and wait. Um, you should simply just call context dot perform and uh, that will if this is a background context, it will perform it on the background queue. And if it is on the main queue, it will perform it on the main queue. Um, so uh, that's how you can guarantee yourself that you are on the uh, on the main queue or on the queue that context was created. And that is how to uh, obviously get the main queue context and how this is how to get additional background contexts. Now, the question might be, if you are using an app, why do you want to have um, background queues? You've only got one window being, or one view being displayed at any one time. Why do you need all these multiple contexts? So the, uh, the classic answer is, well, if you're a game, for instance, and you are loading up a new level, then uh, you don't want to freeze up the user interface. Uh, you might be downloading a lot of graphics and things like that. And you can update your database in the background and uh, that'll all uh, be sucked down from 
uh, the database or read in from uh, your core data database in the background and your user interface still remains good. The other thing is that you might have a tab view controller and with a tab view, all of the different views are maintained in memory at the same time. And if someone uh, is making a change on one tab and then moves to another tab, uh, you may have loaded the data on one tab and then you may have an overlap of data on the second tab. They save that data on the second tab before they've saved any changes on the first tab. And then you get into a situation um, where you've got to figure out um, what you're going to do with uh, saving this overlapping uh, data. Uh, but that's an example where you could have multiple contexts and maybe one of them saving to the background to allow the user interface to occur and etc. So uh, it's, and, and the other thing you've got to remember is that core data is also available to for uh, Macintosh app development where this could be running over a network and there could be multiple users. It's not just a function uh, or a feature of app development. It's also a feature of uh, Macintosh development. So um, anyway, that's just putting it all into context for you and uh, I hope that helps you out. So there you go. We can create background threads and make sure all of the code is running on the correct thread. If you have any questions about the tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel, it's free and check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers.